Hey, this is Mikey here, and in this After Effects tutorial, sponsored by Videoblocks, we're going to be taking this panning shot and replacing the words on the ambulance with whatever we want. Okay, so here's what we're going to be doing. We have this ambulance and the panning shot, and as you can see, I've replaced uh, the town name with, you know, a new name. I just called it Hometown, something generic. Um, but there's lots of stuff we can do with this, and we're, we're using the 3D camera tracker in order to, to do this, to be able to track this and take out the, the name. Now, one thing you need to understand is when you can use the 3D tracker for something like this and when you can't. So, generally, when the camera is moving and nothing else is, the 3D camera tracker works great for doing this kind of stuff. Now, if something else is moving and the camera is staying still, um, then you're going to use a different tracker. But so if the camera's moving like it is now, this is why we're using the 3D tracker. Now before we jump into this, I do want to talk about video blocks. So what video blocks is, is a subscription based membership for stock footage, videos, templates, things like that. And as you can see, there's backgrounds and after effects templates and more on that in a bit. And with this subscription, their benefits are there's unlimited access to their library of over 115,000 videos. Um, that's, $10 million worth of stock footage that they have in their library. And plus, anything in their marketplace, um, you get 40% off of that footage as well. So really kind of a cool thing, and it's all royalty-free license. Plus, they add new clips every month to make sure the library is good and fresh. Now, down in the description of this video, there's a link to where you can get a free 7-day trial. That is 140 clips that you can get in that 7-day trial. Or if you know that you want to just subscribe to this right away, then you can apply that towards $50 off your annual fee instead of the seven day trial. So you got some options there. Now with these After Effects templates, these are really cool. Since you guys are into After Effects, you're following my videos on my channel, um, I wanted to show you this because I love checking out people's templates and what they're doing. It's a good way of learning really quickly After Effects because you can go in and see what they're doing and break it apart and look at all the stuff. It's like watching a tutorial, but you have the project file and you go in and really dig deep into it. So if you wanna do that just to learn some stuff or if you just need something really quickly, sometimes I don't have time to create the things because I need to get something done really quickly and so After Effects templates are a really good way of doing that. So that's video blocks. Make sure you check out the link in the description and click on it. All right, back to our tutorial. So I'm gonna take my piece of footage. Let's drop it into a new composition. So we've got nothing going on. And you can see it says Idaho Falls Fire Department and we're gonna take that out. This also works if you wanna, you know, if there's a name on a building or something like that. So first we're going to track the camera. Remember we're doing the camera track, not the motion track or a mask track. So select your layer. And if your tracker window isn't open, mine is, it's over here on the right. You can come over here to Windows and you turn on Tracker. I'm going to hit Track Camera and it's going to start analyzing this all in the background. Now I can do a little bit of stuff, but really not a whole lot while it's doing that. But what I do want to do is come in here and change some of these things. So the Auto Detect, I'm going to just go down here. I know it's on a tripod and it's pan, so I can turn that on. And let's go ahead and put on Detailed Analysis to make sure it's really a good track. You can see up here, there's some progress. It's at 8%, 10%, and they're just going to go through that until it's all done. So we'll skip past this, and we'll get back into it. All right, the track is done. You can see all these little track points all over the footage, and as we play through it, you can see they're basically stuck everywhere on the footage. And that's what we want, because these points are going to tell us where things are. How the 3D camera tracker works is it looks for... Uh, points of contrast you can see it's grabbing these points where there's you know there's lines there's different types of um, values colors different contrasts so right here in the middle where it's just all white or all yellow it's not gonna find a lot of points it needs something to see now after we go and track it we're going to create a camera and you over here in the effects there's it says create camera and what that does is it creates a 3D camera that moves the exact same way that your camera that you shot the footage with moves. So now if we were to put something in this 3D space, it would basically be in that area. So for example, I'm gonna zoom in here and let's find an area. You can see it's kinda of hard to see because that big target is over it, but there's little triangles underneath it. And basically it's finding three 
points and creating a triangle, I can right click and let's create a solid. Zoom back out and let's preview this. All right, so that's, it's stuck on there pretty good. It's not the right angle and things like that, but that's okay because for what we're doing, we don't need it to be the right angle. We just need it to be covering up um, this part of the, the ambulance. So let's go in, let's take this solid. I'm going to hit Command, Shift, Y. It brings up my solid settings. And let's change the width of that. That looks like it's big enough. And then let's grab just the X and let's move it over so it covers up the words that we want to uh, cover up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. Now what I wanna do, as you can see there's two different, there's a shadow um, on this where we've got some darker and some lighter values and I need to recreate that. So I'm gonna duplicate this track or this solid, put it on there twice. This bottom one, I'm gonna hit Command Shift Y again and I'm gonna just color it this color of this background right here, this lighter color. And this top one, I'm going to add to it an effect. The four color gradient effect. All right, now we need to use the pen tool. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit closer. And you can see this is a lot bigger than it needs to be. So I'm going to crop in here, just right around where the words are. And then right here, I got to kind of recreate this shadow. So I'm going to go right here on the line then come down. And it looks like maybe some trees back here. Something about like that. Okay. Now let's turn back on this layer. And you can see it's not the right colors. Um, but let's grab these points. Make sure they're about where we want them. Right on the edges where it meets the other colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the eyedropper and get the color right where it meets. Because there's a lot of gradient going on in this. And we might need to take the blend and bring it down a little bit. Okay. Grab that top point, and maybe I'll move that top point right here and grab this darker color up there. Okay, now let's feather this. Now, instead of using just the normal feather tool for the mask, I'm going to use this mask feather tool up here in the toolbar. It works a little bit differently. The feather controls down in the mask feathers everything equally. This can feather things variably. So down here I can have more feather. Over here I can keep it sharper. So let's bring a lot of feather down here. And you can see I can feather out or feather in. It's really kind of a cool um, tool if you haven't used it much. Let's bring this down to that line. And then right here where these mountains are or these trees, I want to have it a lot less feather. I want it pretty sharp there. Maybe about like that. I think I'm going to need to have a lot more feather down here at the bottom. So it blends nice. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now let's turn on the layer beneath it. And let's come in and crop this one as well. Use the pen tool. And we just need to crop it. We might have to adjust these later. But that looks pretty good. Just right here. Just to cover up the little bit of the words. See you right there. So let's come in and feather this as well. I'm going to use the same mask feather tool. Now I might want to add just a tiny bit of feather on this mountain. Just 
just a little bit like that. Okay, so we've gone in and we've erased out the the letters. Now, if we were since it's all in 3D space, see these these null objects or these solids, I mean, are 3D. As it moves, it just sticks to where, right where it needs to be. Pretty cool. Because the solids aren't moving. The camera is moving around the solids. All right, now on top of this, let's add some text. So I'm gonna go and click down on the, the layer where the 3D tracker is. Click on the 3D tracker and it brings those points back up. So let's go in, make sure you're on the arrow main selection tool. Find one of these planes, right click, and let's create text now. Now the text is showing up beneath the other layer and I'll show you how to fix that because I picked a different spot and the orientation is slightly off. So let's come in here on this orientation and on this one, and I'm gonna just copy this orientation and paste it onto the text and that should fix it. Okay, now let's grab this text. And the first thing I'm going to do is pre-compose this, put it into a, a new uh, composition. And I'm gonna have to go in and make some changes, copy some settings over. Because I want this layer to be 3D um, and not the layer inside of it. So let's take this text comp that we just created. I'm gonna put it and drag it into a new window so I can see this text and this text at the same time. So what we're gonna do is in the transform, we got anchor point, which is set to zero, position, scale, all these things. We need to copy this data over into this pre-comp we just made. So, copy and paste, position, anchor point, scale, and orientation. Okay, and then after we're done, we're gonna reset that so everything is back to normal in this comp. We can go ahead and bring that down uh, with the other one. Okay, now what that did, is it brought this composition where it needs to be as the comp instead of what's inside the comp. Okay, let's kind of straighten this out. Now, you'll see that that text is right there. It doesn't look the same though. So let's work on making this text fit that text where there's kind of some sparkles and some you know there's some black t a stroke around it first let's go in here and type what we want it to say so hometown then we come in and I'm just adjusting the anchor point and the scale to make that fit right where I want it. Right about there looks pretty good. Okay, now back in this comp, let's come in and work on this text to make it look more like the other one. So first thing I'm going to do is, is we're gonna add some noise because there's kind of some sparkle to it. Let's actually add grain. So we're going to add grain to this so we have some control. Let's um, set this to final output. Bring up the intensity. For the color, we just want it monochromatic. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go back. It's about the right kind of glitter. We're gonna add some more to this because it's not quite looking like it yet. So let's go to layer, down to layer styles, and let's add a stroke. We wanna add the stroke as a layer style and not in your just your character palette. Otherwise, it would add the grain on top of the stroke and we don't wanna do that. Let's make it black, maybe make it a little thicker. Now on the grain, go into the animation and there's animation speed. We're gonna set that to zero because we don't actually want this to animate. We just want it to give that look of the glitter. Okay, so this should be good. Now we can come back in here and it's starting to look a lot better. It's almost looking like it fits. Um, the But it's the same color all the way across. So let's add to this a light sweep. So under generate CC light sweep, and you can see it 
immediately it gives a nice reflective look to this. Now I don't want to have the edge intensity on this, so I'm going to bring that down. And let's change the direction. Just to kind of hit this top corner. Where it should be uh, lighter because the sun's hitting it more. Okay, uh, now another thing we can do is we can come into this and this color, instead of having a color, let's add in a gradient. So I'll go down to generate gradient ramp. Let's bring that up to the top above the grain. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that grain so we can see. And put one point at each end of the word. And let's grab that same color, but here at the end, we're going to make it a little darker. So, and then the front maybe a little brighter. So we got a little bit of a gradient going down it. Let's turn back on that grain. There we go. Let's go back into our main comp. Things are looking pretty good. Now let's render this out and see how it looks. Okay. Now with this, to really make sure everything is selling the effect just perfectly, you will want to turn on motion blur. Um, you turn it on here, click on the layer, and you click it uh, globally as well up there. And you also need to know what the footage was shot at. So if it was shot at a higher shutter speed, then you're going to want to make sure that the shutter speed of your composition matches. So this was shot at a little bit higher shutter speed because it was really bright outside. So we go into the composition settings, go to advanced, and I already have it set at a shutter angle of 45. That's the equivalent of 1 120th of a second for the shutter speed. Because normally we're at angle of 180. And if we do 180, you're going to see that it, the motion blur on this just doesn't look quite right. It's blurring a little bit more than the surroundings as I turn it on and off. So let's go back into my composition settings, advanced, and bring that back to 45. And it's just a little bit of motion blur. Okay, so that is the tutorial. And just a quick recap. We use the 3D camera tracker to track this shot and be able to go in on a, basically on a, a still image after you 3D track it and create the imagery to cover up the word. And then we put in some new text on top of that. Since I went in and pre-comped the text, I'm able to go into that text layer really easily and just swap out that text with any word I want to. Also, we used the add grain to add that sparkle um, and the light sweep to make the kind of more light hitting right there where the sun's hitting it more. So just a few little techniques to kind of sell the effect. So I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. And if you haven't done so, you might want to consider subscribing to this channel. I put out tutorials regularly and um, things like this. There's also other tutorials on the channel, so go check out my home channel and see all the many other tutorials I have. There might be something you're looking for right now, so go check it out and see what there is. And again, special thank you to Videoblocks for sponsoring this ad. If you need some stock footage or even some backgrounds or After Effects templates, definitely go check them out. There's a link in the description for a free seven day trial, absolutely free for seven days. So there's nothing to lose. Just go check it out, see what they have to offer. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.